one thing we must talk about is definitely the front yard line, yes, which is happening exciting tonight. exciting stuff. And what is really exciting about that is right now I get to speak with one of the film producers, filmmakers, sorry, um, Kim Johnson, who's a playwright for a film called Pan Odyssey. Good morning, Kim. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Um, I'm not a playwright. Eh? That's why you write a play. <laughs> yeah. So good morning. Um, good so tell morning. me about your, tell me the background or the synopsis of Pan Odyssey. Um, well, the, the background is that Jean-Michel Gibet and I decided we wanted to produce a, a film on Pan. And he pulled in a friend of his who is a, a very big filmmaker in Paris and who is actually the most experienced of the three of us. And we decided, okay, we, if we make a film, we want to make a film of international quality, not just a kind of local trend, that television thing. Yeah, exactly. And you know, um, all, always um, looking to raise the bar and produce things that are of the level of the, of the international industry because um, we definitely have the talent here and um, you are one of those talents as well. So aside from the synopsis of it, you know, this is dealing with carnival and, and you know, how, how did it, how do you translate it into um, this season of carnival? Well, I mean, it, it, it is on pan, eh? so it's intrinsically in a sense about carnival, but we wanted to emphasize also that it is um, an international phenomenon. It started here and it became, it sort of grew out of Trinidad. And that's why the initially we, we call it Pan We Are The World. And when you see the film, you'll see that we have people from other countries in, in, in parts of it. You know, we have people from France and Japan and the U.S. Um, so it, it, is, it, it is bigger than the Trinidad Carnival, in a sense. And we wanted to bring that out. We also wanted to bring that out because we... We wanted to market it internationally, and um, the best way to do that is to have international people involved. Because ultimately, at least when it comes to other countries, people are more interested in themselves. I mean, yeah. that is the opposite of that. Yeah, so tell me about how, who are the international people involved? Well, in this story, we have a, a French woman um, who plays for Desperados, Eva Goldstein. We have um, Andy Narell, who is American. We have a Japanese woman, Chihiro. Um, so those are, they are part of the story. You see, it's a kind of peculiar mix of documentary and drama. It's a drama film like, you know, like any other film. You go to the cinema to see, but it's intercut with documentary aspects. Yeah, because it definitely chronicles something that is historic to Trinidad and Tobago as, re as it relates to our national instruments. So I understand what you mean between a cross between a documentary and a drama. So um, how has the reception of this film been and what do you expect for it in the future? Well, the reception in Trinidad was very kind of lukewarm at best, but that's how it goes. The reception internationally has been great. I mean, we showed on PBS, that was 4 million viewers. Last year, we, 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 we screened in five cinemas in Japan. I mean, it's translated on, it was on French television. Um, it's translated into Spanish. So internationally, I mean, I, I was there when it was screened at the British Film Institute in London. So the international reception has been tremendous. I, I got, I've got emails from Poland, um, so, and it's fantastic that you got um, such a warm reception from the international community. Tell me, what do you think is the reason why um, locally you said the, the response to it was lukewarm almost? But generally, Trinidadians only, Trinidadians aren't too interested in Trinidad things. Eh? The, the assumption is that is low quality. But secondly, um, PAN. Even though people talk about the national instrument and so on, the reality is Pan is not the music of the younger generation. I mean, they're into their dance hall and their hip-hop and so on. I mean, when I was young, Pan was the music of young people. You couldn't have a party, a, a carnival party, without a Pan side. 
you know, it was the main music of carnival. So times have changed, you know, in a way it's kind of almost like what jazz has become. People talk jazz, but the reality is nobody, nobody really, apart from a few intellectuals, listens to jazz, even though they are still the best musicians in the U.S. So, um, I mean, that's what we stream in against. So it's, it's a double current. It's a current of the Trinidad self-contempt. I mean, Naipaul wrote about that. Eric Williams wrote about that. Trinidadians basically think of Trinidadians as mediocre and no good. And at the same time, Pan is, is, is really not the, um, the music of, of young people. Well, as you said, it's not the music of young people, but would you consider it a dying art, though? Um, it's difficult to answer that briefly, yeah, because in a sense, in a sense, yes, but in a sense, no. And we have to take the, the, the no part and work on it to see how we, how we could, how we could bring it into the 21st century. Now, if it was what? left solely in your hands, how would you bring it into the 21st century? Well, the first thing I would do, and, and I am actually working on a project, is I would change how it is taught. The, the days of teaching, teaching a fan by rote, where you, you spend two months to learn one tune, that, that cannot cut it in the 21st century. Most of the steel bands are aware that that can't work, but what they're trying to do is, is to teach people music literacy, which is equally um, useless. Generations, I mean, going back to the 19th century, generations of Trinidad women were taught piano like that, and the only thing it taught them was to hate the piano. That's what we're trying to do with Pan. So the two things we're doing can't work. What we have to do is we have to bring Pan into the 21st century, which is teach people to learn by ear, which is the, if you hear a song and you like it, how do you play that song? And secondly, to teach people to improvise, which means if you have a Pan, if you have your Pan and I have my Quattro and, 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 and Denise have her, her keyboard, we could jam, you know. If you like rock music, Right. All, you, all you have to do is say, so, oh, so what, what you're basically you saying is to um, get Pan involved in more of the mainstream so that um, there would be this push of Pan into the 21st century, as you said, so it would be um, heard and incorporated into this generation. Well, uh, would you say that? I would say, yes. Look, give the Pan to the youth. I yeah. Let them play what music Excellent they point. like. Excellent give point. Well, youth. Dr. Kim Johnson, screenwriter of Pan Odyssey, Thank you so much for all you've shared this morning. Um, you know, definitely a lot to contemplate upon and definitely a lot um, you have informed us on. Thank you again.